Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kendar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch and YouTube. And if you are looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we are doing Chapter 7 of uh, The Captain's Heart. The music paused in the earpiece as Jeremy straightened. Thirty repetition, the smooth voice says, said, starting minute-long pause. Ah, come back here. Oh, what the hell? Get out of there. You're not part. Ah! Thank you, thank you. Start at minute long pause. Starting minute long pause, the music started again. The bar in his shoulder no longer had weight, and he leaned it against a stand, walking to rest his legs while drinking the mix that had been printed on his arrival. Exercising was the one aspect of his, edu his education had warned him about. Throughout his courses, the instructions always emphasizes being sure of his measurement, of the material strength of everything except his body. It had left him feeling like being an engineer would keep him at his drafting table with the occasional trek to a company that needed specially made machinery. And maybe it was like that for most engineers. Plural. Those hiring with construction companies, ship designers, or ship designers. I wanted to put a third one, I couldn't think of it. Or, a sh or ship designers. But he had found work on a research station, and one at the frontier of antimatter research. For humans, at least. Yeah, this will be a... For humans, at least. This first day, I found work on. Why, why do you not like this? Mm, no. Uh, his first day had been spent running from one emergency to the other as this scientist overloaded. As a scientist overloaded this and another burnt that. Burned that. He'd considered it a miracle that nothing had exploded and hoped it was the exception of the norm. And then Dr. Manuel had told him he'd passed her test, except for how out of shape he was. She took him to the gym to have an endurance regiment, an endurance training regiment worked out for him. He'd resented, he'd resented her for the subterfuge. He didn't need to be lied to, to give, lied to, to give his all. But, He'd followed her instruction since she was his boss and had continued with his training since. Nothing intensive, but he'd gotten used to being able to run across the station without falling from exhaustion upon reaching the reactor he had to fix before the meltdown happened. Pause ending, the voice said. Please return the exercise to, to the exercise position for another 30 repetition at 102 kilos. He placed the bar over his shoulder and adjusted his stance. Then... Then it weighed 102 kilos. He did the 30 repetition, and the voice interrupted his music to inform him he was done with this exercise. On the way to the pulleys, he printed another drink. Sorry for being late, Omar said, stepping to the printer next to the one Jeremy waited at. The two had started working out together a year in of Jeremy starting at the station, and after yet another visit to his doctor for his stomach issues, it had taken a and I, uh, okay, this is going to be that. It had taken a while to adjust his medication so that his stomach didn't trigger the slightest trust. Even back then, Jeremy could deal with a meltdown without his stomach, without his stomach acting up. But bumping into a muscular guy could have him worrying and his stomach acting up. He didn't remember getting beaten up by a bully or threatened, but someone back in his childhood had to have scared him to react like this. At least now my stomach only reacted to reset. Okay, um, this I need to change because 
as my course scripter pointed out, it's not quite clear why he's no longer reacting to that. I know why, but Jeremy needs to have come up with an excuse for it. Um, Um, All right, so let's try that. At least now, you know, at least now, we, mm, no. At least now, we no longer notice the others in the gym, even the massive ones. So his stomach no longer bothered him. Do you want to join me once you're done with your warm-up? I'm going to be at the dumbbells. By then. I'm going to be at the dumbbells by then. I'm going to stick to the other today. The system doesn't like it when I don't listen to it. Should be chuckled. You know, that's in your head, right? It's a computer. It doesn't have opinions. Omar shrugged. They're going to be nearly done by then anyway. He took the bottle. All right. But next time you... But next time you lay into me for not hanging out, I will remind you of this moment. And I'll point out that this is one time out of too many to count. While you need to be... Re... While I need to remind you there are other people than me and your friends at least once a week. Jeremy grinned. You are already enough to deal with. I don't need an anyone else. Ha, ha, ha. He reached a pulley, the pulleys, and the system's voice told him how many repetitions he was set for. Put his friends out of his mind and continued with his exercise. There was something in the air. Jeremy thought, Jeremy thought as he walked through the crowd. People were talking excitedly in low voices. The best he could make out, it was about an arrival. He wondered who could be visiting the station that so many people were excited about it. Do you have any idea what's going on? Lucy asked as Jeremy took the salad out of the printer. She nodded to the cafeteria's entrance. Someone's visiting, I think, he replied. I've been in the labs all morning. One of the others might know. He waited for a meal to print, a large steak with far too many fries on the side as far as he was concerned. Today, the available spot on the table for the late arrivals were next to Omar. Oh, man. Omar. Mar. Or Marcel. Lucy was already on Marcel's side of the table, so he sat next to the doctor. Anyone know who's visiting? Lucy asked before digging into her meal. Who told you someone's visiting? William asked. She nodded to Jeremy. I heard... Someone talk about a ship on the way here. What else can it be? It could be cats, William replied, grinning. But they aren't visiting. They limped in and have been docked at the, at the cargo ring. Why there? Alice asked. There's nothing. William shrugged. I'm just, a, I'm just at comms. I don't get to ask certain why certain decisions are made. Blah. So we have cats on the station? Omar asked, grinning at Jeremy. We're getting our very own comedy show. I hope not, he replied, then explained at the raised eyebrow. Just think about all that for flying around and clogging the air system. They aren't designed to deal with it. They'll be fine, Janice said. I mean, if you shave one of them and dump that in the air system, then yes, we're going to be breathing that stuff for weeks. But them just walking around and shedding, we're fine, she grinned. So I say we pull out the, car the, the welcome carpet for them and see what happens. The table exploded in laughter. You guys know we have a Kelsarian on the station, right? William said once he caught his breath, and the table fell silent, staring at him. I guess you didn't. Why do we have one of them? Jeremy asked, slowing his breathing to keep his stomach from acting up. It wasn't like it would know they'd been laughing at them. Because they are the reason we have a chance of joining that Federation of Alien thing. 
Didn't you know that? Our border on this side touches touches theirs. Touches theirs. We are literally the closest human station to them. So we have one of their ambassadors or something. You've met it? Alice, Alice asked. I've seen him. You know what? But he doesn't interact with lowly peons like us. How do you know it's an E, then? Mar Marcella asked. Because the first thing they told us when we arrived was that he was here, and we'd better watch how we treat him if he ever deign talk to one of us. What does he look like? Omar asked. Like, I don't know, a cat? William shrugged. I've, you, we, we've, you've seen them in movies. Those are movies, Omar said. You saw a real one. He still looks sort of like that. Pointed ears on top of his head, short muzzle-like thing. Whiskers, I think. Uh, I think he's fat. At least he looks it. Maybe it's all fur. Ginny chuckled. Maybe it's like in the movies and they're nothing more than bones and fur. Jeremy chuckled and relaxed, too. He, it, he, didn't sound as scary as he'd imagine. Well, I'm just glad they're staying down there. Marcel said. As amusing as it as the idea of watching them pratfall around the station might be, I don't think it's a good idea to let them wander. There are kids here. Can you imagine what they do to them? <clears throat> the following silence turned uncomfortable, and Jeremy focused on eating. Anyone know anyone know what Gregory did to get shipped out? Alice asked. Alice eventually asked. I saw him getting escorted to the shipping ring yesterday. Jeremy shook his head, since he had never heard the name before. When Marcel spoke, it was at a whisper. I heard he caught the sickness. That's not what it's called, Omar said with a roll of the eyes. And, Janice asked, It's called Ancilla, An Encephalo Thromitapil dar Darminol. The doctor stated. I, I was asking if you had it, she said. And now you know why everyone calls it the sickness, Marcel stated. I am not his doctor, and before you ask, I can't get access to his file without a good reason. Your curiosity isn't good enough. He might not have it anyway. Jeremy said, getting over his discomfort. He looked at Omar, hoping he'd pick up the thread, but his friend was looking at him with the same curiosity as the others. He sighed. It's not always diagnosed correctly, even now. They thought I caught it when I was a teen, but it turned out it was it turned out to be my stomach problems. Omar nodded. It's one of those conditions that, without the proper equipment, is nearly impossible to be diagnosed with certainty, which would be why he's returning to Earth. They will diagnose him, and if it turns out that's what he has, I'm certain he'll receive the best care possible. But why was he under guard? Alice asked. I'd expect a doctor if he was going to a hospital, Omar shrugged. I'm not familiar with how that sickness manifests. I've never had to treat someone who might have it. Someone who has it. Someone who has it. Maybe he did something that required him getting arrested, and then they figured out he was sick, William offered. Why don't we have what's needed to diagnose it here? Considering how far we are, you'd think it would be more convenient than shipping someone all the way to Earth. Omar looked at Jeremy, who chuckled. My specialty is antimatter reactors, not medical equipment. For all I know, the machine's larger than the station, and that's why we don't have one. That elicited a chuckle, and the conversation moved on to other subject. And that concludes Chapter 7 of The Captain's Heart. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read this story, it is up on Reem Story. And if you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch and YouTube. And with that, the notes are in the links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.